this article addresses the questions of um, what role does resilience play in peace building? Does it always equate to a positive outcome? And what are the benefits and risks of implementing resilience? Basically, it was a theoretical paper. The authors kind of do a, a broad overview of um, what resilience is, um, how it's often thought about in peace building, and kind of why it, it rose to the prominence that it has now. The potential benefits of it and the problems that can arise from uh, resilience, especially in international interventions, um, and certain uh, associated strategies for implementing resilience into those efforts. Um, they also um, give a sound overview of some existing research and theories related to resilience, and then they give some examples of how it has been used um, in various conflicts. Uh, so overall, um, the takeaway is that resilience does have a lot of benefits. Um, there are some ways that it's improved our peace building capabilities. Um, it, you know, one example of that is uh, that resilience is to help the actual communities affected um, take charge in a way that um, might be the only way that they can. So for some people, there's not much that they may be able to do outside of adapting to the situation, um, especially when there's not a clear resolution that can come right away. So it's a good thing that these communities can adapt and that it's looking at it from the perspective of not just how can external forces you know, uh, change the conflict at hand, but what can the people within that conflict do? Um, and it's also an interdisciplinary tool. So there's numerous ways that it can be approached and can be implemented. Um, there's a lot of different people that can uh, contribute to that. And so, uh, you know, a lot of conflicts are very complex and, and uh, having that interdisciplinary approach can be really helpful. Okay. And then um, there are some um, potential issues with implementing resilience. Um, some of that being the responsibility uh, that falls onto the locals. So sometimes people will remove themselves from the process because um, it's almost a, um, a, a way to kind of break away from it. Well, if there's not much else we can do, we can make you resilient and then we'll walk away from it. Um, so that tends to be the biggest problem that they see with it is, uh, is kind of removing ourselves from the situation. So um, the overall takeaways is that resilience is a good skill for anyone to have, uh, regardless of the kind of conflict but especially if it's an ongoing conflict. Being resilient can have a lot of positive outcomes and uh, can be a way to move forward in a sustainable way towards peace. Um, but it's important for peace builders to note that while it is a useful tool for communities, we still need um, to be of support and assistance um, as the external parties to that area. And um, there's no easier or right way to implement resilience and peace building efforts since there are so many ways that it can be done. Uh, so it's important to take into context uh, the situation and then see what the best approach would be. That's an interesting kind of potential like limitation on resilience because resilience obviously is super important, but then it, it sounds like what it's saying is if uh, like, like it's almost like we, we want to be careful of, of, of putting it in a framework of just like, just suck it up kind of thing, because then it's like putting the onus on the the people that are being affected and okay well then we guess we don't need you if we're just going to suck it up you know yeah and that's that's exactly what they're saying is um that we want to be careful you know and how it's done and that it doesn't just you know mean that for instance you know if you teach people to adapt to the conflict um right. we don't necessarily they may have to accept to some level that this is what what's going on but to just tell them to okay well accept you're in a conflict be be adaptable and that's you know and that's the end of it so it's just that yeah. important of following through to see what other ways can also be done to help resolve the conflict but um but also helping these communities be resilient i would i would think that there's some link there's some association between resilience and hope that, that like, I can be resilient if I do still have some hope that the situation is going to get better. But if like, if I have absolutely no hope that the situation is going to get better, is it better to just figure out how to get out of this environment uh, or something like that? Like, where's the, where's the balance there of like, we have to stay resilient while we're working slowly through this, as opposed to just like, it's never going to get better. You just got to figure it out. I think that's a great point. I, I definitely see a link there too. Um, it's hard, it's hard it when we hard. talk about companies. Because, uh, when we talk about companies, yeah. people can leave a company, but when we talk about countries, that's a lot more difficult. So how do you leave a country? And that's, I mean, it's very, very tough sometimes to leave a country, but you can't leave your family and all that stuff. So um, so, so maybe, maybe there's, 
maybe there's some creative strategies. Okay, how the situation as we know it, yeah, the outside forces aren't going to like change too much. And but how do we make your at least your life better, or how do we do something different for your, you or your family or something to make it better within this within this environment? And I, I think that's a great point um, because hope is really important too. I, I think you're right on that. Um, you know, hit the nail on the head. You know, there has to be, and I think you know there does have to be some work done to help move things forward. I mean, because they talk about the sustainable piece, right? It's not sustainable if if things are you know in the same way that they've always been or getting worse. You know, so there, there has to be these efforts made to move forward and hopefully find ways, you know, to, to stop the conflict. And it may take time. Those communities may need to be resilient for years, but it should be moving, you know, in that certain direction towards sustainability. I feel like the, the point about um, kind of your point there, Jeremy, um, and kind of what you, what, you, what you said there too, Natalie, um, is interesting to me. I've always thought of... Um, resilience as kind of a, I mean, I think of like immediately that just the terms bounce back. Uh, you're, you're able to bounce back from from difficult situations. And that's kind of the way that I've been taught it. Uh, when I was in, in college at Pepperdine, we had like really major wildfires that um, really it disrupted our, um, our life on campus, as well as um, a mass shooting nearby, which affected our students greatly. Um, and so it, in, in response to that, we, um, uh, Pepperdine started a kind of resilience program intervention um, for for its students um, and still continues it as a method of kind of both a support and kind of a small group just to, um, I guess, as a place to share kind of collective trauma uh, in some ways. And so when I think of resilience, I think of um, not trying to, uh, I mean, trying to back bounce, recognizing that problems will occur in life and, and even even traumatic events at times will happen, um, but bouncing back from those regardless. But I think it is interesting to kind of figure out what that balance looks like between um, if you're experiencing uh, traumatic events or just trauma in general constantly, if you're in a like a, a country that is exposed to a lot of intractable conflict, how to how to navigate that balance between you know, oh, these problems are, you know, problems will happen, I can bounce back from them versus I need to get out of here, kind of like what you were talking about. There's no hope and I need to, I'm not healthy here. And I, I don't know if it's up to an, an, I don't know what it's like to live somewhere where there's intractable conflict. Um, so I don't know what that looks like on an individual basis, but I think it's something interesting to, to definitely think about. I think you're right, Noah, especially if you're gonna be a peace builder working in that realm then, I mean, I think your, your training and preparation has to be a little different than, than what we typically do, which is workplace, organizations, um, families, and that sort of thing, because um, you've got all those added, you know, variables. And like you say, the intractable conflicts and those sorts of things. And, and it's just very, very different. And so even resilience means something very different for people that are in those situations versus, like you mentioned earlier, Jeremy, um, a person that's in a workplace conflict where they likely do have some choices or options. And then also where if we're brought in, then typically it shows that the organization has acknowledged the conflict and is hopefully or likely willing to make some adjustments or to grow in some ways to mitigate that conflict and future conflicts. And so it's it's very different. I think, and I hadn't thought about it much before that, but resilience can mean very different things depending on the type of conflict. Yeah, it'd be interesting to, to kind of see how people would define it. Like if you were to ask different, like you mentioned, like somebody in a workplace or um, versus someone, you know, in an intractable conflict, I think that is uh, really interesting. And I guess the other thing is like, I mean, I often think of like with regards to resilience and the peace builder, I think of the peace builder's resilience because mm. I mean, you know, I think we have to have it in order to go in and work with people and guide them through these processes. Um, but you know, I had not really thought about it in terms of 
you know, the, the parties or of the people that you're trying to, to help, you know, bring peace to. Because there's a point even with us where sometimes you work and you go through the processes and then you sometimes you have to make a decision, okay, I've done all I can do and maybe I'm not the best person for this anymore or, you know, maybe these are just high conflict people and they want to be in the conflict and it's time for me to move forward. So I don't think that that's saying that I'm not resilient if I have, you know, put in the effort and done the work. But it's, I think that's probably a form of resilience of just like taking care of yourself. Like I'm going to be okay somehow, no matter what, even if it means I have to leave this job. Right. That's, that's my level of resilience. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. I absolutely agree with you. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's almost as if it's, it's a form of, of self-empowerment. Um, you know, and I, and I think we do that with our clients as well, you know, we, especially in coaching relationships is that we work with them and we, um, you know, we try to help them to become and to feel more empowered so that they have either the skills to work through and manage the conflict or they make those decisions where they feel empowered to, to move beyond it one way or the other. And, and that, that too is resilient. So I think you're right. I was watching this, uh, this, interesting um video youtube video on on like confidence like ways to build confidence and it was using it was using don draper in Mad Men. i don't know if everybody's ever watched that but he's like a super confident character or at least he comes off that way and they were kind of like looking at it, some of the things that he does his character does his characteristics to like exemplify what confidence means and then the old this sort of and they said something that i think preach a lot is the the ultimate level of the ultimate level of confidence, the ultimate thing that, that brings confidence is the, is the, is just knowing this idea that whatever happens, I'll be okay. Just if you know that for sure, whatever happens, I'll be okay. Um, that just brings a lot of confidence. I think that's, I think that's like an ultimate level of resilience, you know, whatever happens, I'll make decisions to ultimately be okay whether that means staying or leaving or whatever, or reframing the situation or whatever it means, I'll be okay. 